All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo. So this is a, let's go ahead and pull this battery out. So pull the two tabs aside and that. This is a Lenovo G510. Uh, model name is 20, uh, 20238, okay? So after you remove the battery, there's actually two screws in here. One is hidden underneath that little sticker. Let's go ahead and remove those using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver, okay? And yeah, we're gonna be upgrading the RAM and the hard drive to an SSD here, okay? Oops, don't wanna lose that screw. Okay, we're gonna have to use something to kind of get underneath here. Let's see, what can I use here? Use this little pokey stick. I don't wanna, I wanna try and preserve the sticker if I can. So there's a little kind of tamper sticker or whatever okay let's see if it will survive right so I just pushed that out of the way and now we're unscrewing this nope it's gonna tear I think all right anyways there we go we got that two screws out let's go ahead now and see if we can pull the cover off all right so now that we got those two screws let's go ahead and try and yep okay so it slides down just like that um, I don't know if I got a thumbnail of this. Let me actually do that real quick. Okay, so it's like that. All right, we'll do a thumbnail here real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and get these out. Okay, we'll slide this down. Once you slide that down, you can go ahead and lift that up. All right, comes out pretty easily. All right, and now we just got to replace the hard drive and upgrade the RAM. So we have one stick of RAM already in here, but we're gonna take this one out. You pull these two tabs to the side, okay? And it comes up slightly, and then you can pull this out, all right? So this is a four gig stick. This is, I can't tell here. It doesn't say, excuse me, but I think it's the same as the other ones, which is DDR3 or PC3. All right, so we have a 8 gig PC3L 12800S stick of RAM here. Okay, let's go ahead and get that in. It goes in at an angle, and then you click that down. All right, I'm gonna actually show more of a close up here so you can see the other side. Okay, all right, so we got the stick of RAM here. I'll take that out. Again, goes in at an angle. Okay, I like to, while it's at an angle, wiggle it around like that while pulling it in and then click it down. Okay, so there we go. We got the two sticks of RAM in place. All right, and then we are going to upgrade the hard drive to an SSD. So the hard drive caddy is right there. Okay, let me actually zoom out a little bit. All right, it's a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. We're gonna undo these two screws here. one and that one okay once we undo the two screws we should be able to slide the hard drive caddy down okay so just try and find a place to pull this down let's see or is there okay they have this little tab here that helps you pull that back all right once you do that you can take it out there's four screws holding the caddy onto the hard drive we're going to take those screws out and we're going to go ahead and Set them aside. Okay, looks like somebody took this apart before, maybe. I don't know, there's some masking tape in there, kind of weird. I'll go over a few of the components I see in here, but we're not gonna do a complete disassembly. Okay, it is a little dusty, so I'm gonna see about cleaning it a little bit as well. Okay, let's go ahead and clean that up while we have this open. All right, anyways, now that the four screws are uh, off, you can go ahead and lift that away and you can see how the hard drive just comes out there. We'll set the hard drive aside for now. Open up the SSD, okay. And we'll get that. Okay, so the SSD is just like this. We're just gonna drop it into there, into the tray and we're gonna put the four screws back in. Okay, just like that. All right, pretty simple. Okay. Just like that.
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up real quick, and then we'll continue working on this. All right, so I'm gonna clean the dust off, and I'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and put the SSD in. All right, so we'll just, again, line it back up here. Make sure these the connector lines up, and then push the whole thing back into place. Good. We'll put back the two screws to hold it down. I'll quickly go over what I see inside here without having to take it further apart. Um, it looks like the optical disk drive is easy to remove, the CD drive or DVD drive, whatever you want to call it. All right. So there's just one screw here. You take that one screw out. After that, um, you can use your screwdriver to kind of push it that way, or I just like to kind of use my finger, fingernail and then wiggle it like that as I pull it. Um, I can actually show you that, so we'll get this one screw out, okay? And then again, I just use my finger, wiggle that, and pull it, and you can see how it comes out. If for some reason you can't pull this or it's difficult, it, don't use too much force. Just use the screwdriver again, and you can push the back through just like that, okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and go over what other components are in here. Actually, I should probably see how thick this drive is. This seems to be one of the thicker ones, like the 12.5 millimeter or something. So if you want to replace that with a hard drive uh, caddy to put a second uh, two and a half inch SATA hard drive, uh, you can do that. All right, there's the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. The red wire is coming towards the front and the black wire is going towards the middle of the laptop. Okay. We also have the wireless card here. The antennas, if you want to remove, you go from the tail and just pull straight up. I don't want to mess with it because sometimes the solder is bad there and it can break the little connectors off the boards. It's pretty rare, but I don't want to take the risk. There's the DC jack charge port connector here. You got the speaker. <coughs> Excuse me. You got the speaker connection here. All right, with the wires going, one going to the left and one going to the right. Um, you got the LCD LVDS connector here, but it's on the other side of the motherboard. Uh, fan connector is here. CPU is here. It looks like the CPU is upgradable if you were to take the CPU uh, heatsink off. There's a little screw here that you can twist the other way um, and that will let you pull the uh, CPU out. All right. Not really much else to show inside here. I'm not going to be taking this one apart because the customer just wanted me to replace the drive and upgrade the RAM and then install Windows on there. So let's go ahead now and put this thing back together. Okay, so we got that off. What did I do? Oh, here, cover. Oops, I need to clean the other side of the cover. It's a little dusty, so let me clean that as well, and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and put the bottom cover back on. So slide that in, okay, and then slide that up. We'll get the two screws back in. Okay, get that screw back in there. And then we'll get the second one and do the same thing. Uh, if you want to try and preserve that sticker, then make sure to lift it back up, okay? So that the so that the screw doesn't clamp it down, although it's probably gonna end up clamping it down. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna tear the sticker off. Okay. There we go, get that screw in. It's semi still intact, but not really. Okay, there we go. We're gonna go ahead now and put the battery back in. So the battery, is there a model number here? Uh, L11L6Y01, that's the battery model number here. We're gonna go ahead and get this back in, just like that, slide it, lock that back down. Okay, flip this back over. Go ahead and plug this guy back in, and then we'll see about booting from our Windows USB. All right, so actually, let's get a thumbnail of the keyboard real quick here. Okay, just like this. All right, plug this in. All right, I'm gonna plug the Windows USB in here. I created a Windows USB with a uh, bypass for the, what do you call, system requirements, so it doesn't worry about if it's the correct, I mean, if the processor is supported by 
uh, Microsoft Windows 11 or not, it'll allow it to work even without the TPM stuff. So anyways, we're gonna push this little button here. This is the one key recovery button, which should also turn on the computer, but I don't see it turning on the computer, so I wonder if this, oh, there we go. Okay, it did turn itself on. And then it should give me the BIOS boot, here we go. So we're gonna go to the BIOS setup. I just wanna see if the settings are set up properly here. So we do have UEFI mode, that's good. If it's not set to UEFI, then uh, once Windows installs, it's probably not gonna boot up properly. Okay, I think everything else should be okay. There's not really many settings in here. Okay, we do want AHCI. And I think that's it. Is the date and time correct? No, it's showing it's midnight. <laughs> so let's go ahead and set up the date and time. It's 7.45 a.m. right now, uh, September 24th. So we'll set up uh, September, oops, 24th, 2025. And it's what, seven, sorry, I'm trying to check. I'm using the phone to record. 7.45, okay. Here we go. So we'll exit saving changes. Actually, let's save changes first. Exit saving changes. Um, and then now we technically have to push that or F12. Okay. Um, I guess it's already booting my USB because there's no other option since Windows. Uh, there's no operating system on the SSD. But if for some reason your computer wants to boot the uh, any other drive, you want to, again, power it off and then push this little one key recovery button to select the boot options and boot your USB, okay? Um, I turned it off just so I can show you that. We'll push the little button there, okay? And now we can go to boot menu and you can see my EFI USB device and disk cruiser fit. Um, if you're wondering how to create the USB uh, Windows installer that bypasses Windows 11, you need Rufus. You would download the Windows ISO from Microsoft, and then you would use Rufus to create the USB. Uh, when you select the ISO and then tell it to start, it will detect that it's a Windows um, ISO, and then from there it will ask you if you want to bypass uh, or allow it to bypass those system requirements and other things like that. Anyways, the startup process is probably going to take a while, so we're just going to wait a bit. Then you're going to see the little spinning circle, and then um, I'll do the Windows 11 startup process. But that's pretty much all there is to this. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Excuse me, if it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. I also have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. Uh, same profile picture, uh, but zoomed in because it's reviewing close up of stuff. All right, so. Yeah, other than that, you're welcome to stay as I do the Windows 11 installation. And yeah, if it has any drivers that don't automatically in install themselves when I go to install Windows, um, that will be on a separate video. I'll usually try and make a short uh, with that. So yeah, all right, you can see how long it takes for this to load the Windows 11. Uh, this one has an Intel Core i5 processor. I think it's probably like a third generation from the looks of the sticker. I could be wrong, but probably somewhere around there. And yeah. All right. Wow, it's taking so long. Okay, here we go. It's doing something. I hope, I think. Come on. Okay, I'm going to push Shift Tab to go to Next. Press Enter, Shift Tab again, Next tab space to agree shift tab tab next and yeah now it's gonna it asked if i agree to like wipe everything out or that it's gonna wipe everything off the computer so now it's getting everything ready okay it says um to put your product key i'm gonna push a uh, tab and say i don't have a product key enter and the customer wants me to install windows 11 pro so we'll go there press enter uh, we'll get the product key later to activate it, but you can 
finish the entire process without a product key. And actually you can use Windows without a product key, um, but I'm not sure if it will ever stop you from using it. All right, shift tab and enter to accept. Um, if you don't put a product key and you keep using it eventually at the bottom, it'll tell you to activate Windows or something. Um, but other than that, I haven't seen it stop the operating system from working. All right, you can see disk zero, which is the unallocated space. That's the 480 gig SSD that's in there. And then the other one is the USB flash drive. We're just gonna press enter to install it on the unallocated disk space. If you already had some partitions or something on the drive, you're gonna wanna wipe that out. Make sure you delete all those other partitions on that drive before you um, tell it to install Windows on there. Um, you can see it's, okay, there you go. It took a while to show. And then I'll push shift tab and enter to install. And there we go, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, again, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this, bye.